Hey everybody, thanks for joining me back here on the Midnight Paint and Body channel. Hey, on this video, I'm going to show you guys how to install wheel arch repair panels on a 94 to 02 style Dodge truck. I'll show you guys what we're working on here today. So we're going to be welding in these wheel arch repair panels. Um, as you can see, this one is rusted through as is typical on, well, obviously any truck of this era. She is a uh, 96, so she's getting up there in years. Um, but this truck is way, way, way better than most. It's a really solid truck. So we're going to be welding that in. Um, as you can see, I've already stripped the paint off of most of the box. Now, that is not a necessary step, just in this case. Um, this was one of those trucks painted in the era where there was no UV protectants in the clear coats, so all of the paint was peeling all over the place. But, but as you can see, like I said, really, really solid truck. Um, I've put on lower fenders. I did a video on the other side, which you may have seen already. But yeah, definitely. As far as these trucks go, this one is fantastic. And let's face it, this era of Dodge truck, they were not good. I remember back in the day when these were new, doing warranty rust repair on these trucks when they were only a couple years old, so. Now that it made all the Dodge guys mad. As soon as I find my white Oakleys, I'm gonna come kick your ass. As soon as my mom washes all my tap out t-shirts, I'm gonna come kick your ass. I'd come kick your ass, but I blew a tranny. Hey, just kidding. Go finish your rock star and settle down. Okay, let's get back to work. So, as always, I always let people know in these things, the way you buy these panels, that's not necessarily how you're going to be weld them in. I see guys take them, stick them on there, cut them out, and then they're trying to weld in this big nasty square. Um, first tip, welding in panels, you don't want square corners. Round everything off. It's going to pull less with the heat. If you weld that up, you're concentrating so much heat in that corner, it's going to pull in, it's going to shrink, you're going to get a bunch of warpage. So, you, what I do first with these, I'm going to just roughly cut this out, see how far up the rust is going. In this case, I think we're going to be okay, so we're not going to have to go too far. So I'll probably cut it around here, we'll buzz this panel out, and then we'll fit this one up and I'll show you what we're going to do next. be really careful cutting when you get down close to here because we don't want to cut through that inner panel. So I'm just going to cut through the outer sheet metal. The same thing here, I'm going to trim around this lip, but only really shallow, like an eighth of an inch through the outside. So you can see on that inner panel there, I mean, they're, they basically just rust where they hold all the dirt and moisture in there. So this one is actually pretty clean in here, but see it's just that. I guess that's pretty much solid rust. And then they've got this foam in here, which I don't really know what its purpose was when they did this other than to maybe make them rust out in 10 years, like I'm pretty much convinced the manufacturers do on purpose. 
But you can see we've cut way above where the rust is, so we're into good clean metal, no problem. And you can see why, like I said, to only cut about an eighth of an inch here because we don't want to cut that inner panel. And I did just cut it like that because now I'm going to take the air chisel and take that lip off. It's spot welded all around. You can just drill the spot welds out, but I'm just going to take the air hammer and blast it off of there. So typically, if your truck is really rusty, if you're seeing a lot of rust up here, 95% of the time, this inner needs to be replaced as well. It's pretty rare to get one where this is still solid. Now I was counting on with this one only being a little bit rusty, the inners would be okay, and they, they appear to be even right there where that rust bolt was. They still seem solid. So, um, what I always do with these, I'm going to take a needle scaler now. I'm just going to knock off as much of this loose rust as I can on this. And then I'm just going to brush paint this with some uh, Rust-Oleum or, or POR-15, whatever I have there. Um, you don't have to do that. I do it on customer vehicles because any little thing I can do to make them last a little bit longer, I, I tend to do when it's... Uh, you know, it's a cheap, easy thing that I think makes quite a difference. So I'm going to clean that up, get some black paint on it, and then we'll move on to the patch panel. If you don't have one of these, these, these are pretty cool. The needle scaler has got these hardened needles, and it's just an air hammer, but it'll buzz everything off. Now, most of these tools, I mean, most of my tools are inexpensive stuff that you can get from Princess Auto or for... Or American viewers, Harbor Freight, the same thing. Um, of course, nice expensive tools are good too if you can afford them, but this stuff works for me. And something I mentioned, every time I do rust repair videos, the best prevention for this kind of rust is getting it clean in here. Now, obviously spraying up in the wheel weld, pressure washer, it doesn't get the stuff that's in between. Um, if you spray up from the bottom into there, or I tell guys all the time, once a year, take the tail light out, Go to the car wash, jam the pressure washer in there so you're blowing all the dirt out of here. If that dirt isn't sitting in there staying wet, your truck's going to last a lot longer without rusting. So, Just my little preventative maintenance tech tip for you guys. inner panel sealed up with some uh, rust-oleum whatever it was I used uh, or no Krylon Krylon rust paint that stuff seems to work really well uh, so we're now I'm gonna start prepping up this panel I'm gonna go ahead and punch some holes around the lip where we're going to be redoing those spot welds to this lip uh, I'm gonna do that now because once I've got this panel in place it's probably not coming back off Here's another little thing before we put that panel in place. Now I want to know roughly where I cut because when I've got that panel on what I want to do is cut through that panel and this panel so we have a nice uh, butt match. So I'm going to take my pencil kind of roughly so I'm roughly there because I don't want to if I cut my panel below that line then we're screwed then we got a big gap so we need to make sure we're cutting above. 
So just kind of a, a loose reference, same here. Just so we make sure we're going beyond that. And I'll show you guys here in a minute why I'm doing that. Clamp around the wheel lip there for now. So there's our reference line there. So I'm gonna cut a little higher. I'm gonna buzz, like I said, I'm gonna buzz through both panels at this point. Um, here, we're gonna stay above this body line. We don't need to get down into there. And yeah, I'll get that cut. We'll have another look. So you'll see now, this is gonna just kind of fall right into place. I probably need to do a little bit of trimming once I take that piece of metal from out behind and get it nice and tight to that lip. It's probably gonna move it up just a little bit, but I'll just use the zip cut for that. So let's pull that off and see how it looks. We need to cut through a little bit more. I was being careful there because I didn't want to cut into the inner. So we'll finish trimming that out. We should have a nice clean fit there now. It may need a little bit of trimming. Um, and something I usually mention too with this stuff, if you're not confident, if you're doing this for the first time, you're not confident you're welding or, or getting that nice, uh, that nice fine butt weld there, you can overlap the panel. You can leave about a half an inch of the original metal and just lap that over a little bit so it gives you a little bit of a backing to weld to. Um, I prefer to do the butt weld. I don't like leaving that, uh, that little channel in there that can hold dirt and moisture, uh, especially on a customer vehicle where obviously I want it to last you know, as long as it did the first time. So uh, we're going to weld that in. And then the other thing, you always want to try and treat the inside with something because you can have that exposed weld. So I always do that as well. Let's see how she fits. All right, so a little bit of adjustment, but so you can see I've got that. Nice gap there. So I'm, I'm hitting a little bit there, so I'll probably take the zip cut. And I'm gonna buzz that, I'm gonna buzz all of that with the zip cut until I've got a gap about like what you're seeing right there. So that's just a matter of a little bit of trimming. But other than that, we've got it kinda right where we want it. So we're ready to start welding this guy in place. So lots of tack welds spaced apart. Lots of time to cool. You don't want to warp up the panel and give yourself a whole bunch of extra body work.
oh, there she is, all welded in. So when you get to that point, when you're grinding your welds down, you, you don't have to take them completely off. You're, I mean, I guess it's possible to get that perfect fit where you could take that weld right down, but I like to make sure there's still a little bit there for strength. Um, we're gonna be coating it with body filler from this point anyway. Um, but, you know, I, I kept the heat down so there's no warpage, so it's not gonna take much filler at all. Uh, the next thing I will do from there, I'm gonna go around, which I'll show you, I did the other side yesterday. But I'll just go around and check for any anything that looks like there could be a little porosity or pinholes and touch them up with the welder. Then from there, we'll move on to some body filler. Um, but I'm not gonna videotape that part. Uh, I've done videos on that kind of stuff before. So hopefully this helps somebody out with their projects. Um, keep in mind, these panels, any auto parts store can get you these. You don't need to order them online and pay a bunch of extra shipping and stuff. Just support your local auto parts store. They can get them. So yeah, so I just want to thank you guys for watching. Um, I hope this video helps somebody out. And I do want to thank all you guys that have been subscribing too, because I mean, the, the channel is just steadily growing. I'm really happy about that. Um, so if you can hit the subscribe button, you know, I don't get anything for it. It's not like I make money off doing this, but it's just a little validation, you know, as the subscriptions go up, makes it more worthwhile for me to keep these kind of videos coming because I know people want to see them. So yeah, that's the only reason I do. I'm just trying to help people out and I kind of have fun making them. So, and I'm doing the work anyway. So anyway, guys, thanks again for watching. I do hope you come back and join me on the next video. Um, and as always, if there's anything you would like to see, let me know and I'll do my best to uh, make it happen. Anything auto body related, you want to learn, see how it's done. Um, I've said before, I'm not the top expert body man in the world. I'm just an average auto body guy that uh, this is how I make my living. So I'm sure there's experts that are better explaining stuff or, you know, better at this stuff than I am. but. But like I say, I just try and share what I do. Hope it helps somebody out. Hope you come back again. Thanks for watching. See you on the next one.